Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so let's get into some wine I can review. All right, um, not, yeah, okay. Seemed like the, it was a little high on the meter there on the thing. All right, so I've got, um, I've got three episodes here to do. Um, all wines that were uh, very kindly donated to me, um, except they, they called me Jeff, by Mark Feinberg. And I, he sent me plus stuff before, and he knows my name is Mark, because we actually had communication over this week. So I think it was just a mistake. But uh, anyway, uh, so Mark over at Balzac uh, Communications and Marketing sent me a whole bunch of Parducci wines. Now, I've had some Parducci in the past. Uh, I do remember liking it. Uh, I think I called it Father Parducci. You know, as in the Father, uh, Father Guido Sarducci uh, from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that kind of dates me, because that was from, like, the original cast and all that. Um, anyway, uh, so they, uh, they, they sent me some samples and I'm finally getting around to doing it. So this is the first set of samples. These are from their, um, uh, what are they called? The, uh, lifestyle wines. So these are, uh, not expensive, um, but they're not like dirt cheap. They're not like six bucks type of, type of wine. And, uh. Thought I heard noise. Anyway, um, so uh, we got two of these here, uh, both red wines. Uh, the first one we are going to uh, play with is the uh, 2015 Zinfomaniac. Let's see if we get a little closer there for you. Uh, Zinfandel uh, from Lodi. It's 100% Zin. Um, they actually even give, give me case production, 12,526 cases produced. Um, it spends 12 months in French and American oak, 23%, which is new. Uh, they don't specify which one is new or how much of each is new. Um, they do say that uh, the uh, Zinfandel grapes were grown from some of the finest 35 to 80 year old vines from Lodi and up in, in an up and coming premium appellation that benefits both from the Bay Area cool fog as well as um, the long and warm growing season. Uh, it says these old vines yield fewer grape clusters with smaller berries resulting in intense bold wines that are deep in color with concentrated dark fruit flavors, which is all technically correct. So, um, uh, the, the, the less grapes, the more intense. And then if you have, uh, small berries, you have a higher juice to skin ratio. Um, anyway. And it says handpicked at optimal ripeness. The grapes were crushed and fermented with native yeast, while three times daily pump overs extracted additional flavor and color. Uh, after fermentation, uh, the wine received a short extended maceration, which just means it says uh, extended extended skin contact, uh, and then was gently pressed. Uh, the wine was aged for twelve. Yeah, I already talked about that. All right, so let's get into this wine. I'm really excited. Um, Zin was the uh, varietal type of wine that kind of got me into wine on, on a serious note um, or a serious level. And um, honestly, I don't have enough Zin in my life. Uh, I don't know if it's just I've moved on or I've had I have had a. I want to say a rash of zins that are, were not inspiring, but you know I've definitely had some zins that were over the years that never that didn't recapture that that uh, that uh, um, joy. So I think it was more about the situation and where I would drink it, and I was surrounded by people that I liked, and I was in a great place, and I had great food, and and it was just a great wine. I think it was more about the experience. I've had that particular wine in the past. Still, it wasn't bad but it wasn't as good as I remembered. Uh, anyway, so let's try this. Again, I love, or I've 
My love affair with wine started with Zen. Let's put it that way. All right. I mean, it's really purple. Uh, definitely starts with some bright red intense fruits. There's also a bit of cola. Uh, almost, almost big red. Strawberry. Um, if, you, if you're not from Texas area, you don't know what big red is. Uh, it's like... Um, I don't know what it's like. There, there was, there's a, there's another soda that they that sold here, but it's from like a national brand that's, it looks like it's similar. Is it Code Red? The Mountain Dew Code Red? I don't know. Anyway, I've never had it, but it looks like the same thing. But also, there's a, um, there's a uh, um, woodsy character to it, uh, bramble. Um, not oaky, but it's like cedar, cedar-like, forest floor, cigar box, cedar, you know, cedar box, some, uh, yeah, I already said forest floor. Honestly, a lot of the stuff I just talked about are like organic earth or non-fruit characteristics. I mean, the red fruit's kind of gone away. It's kind of unusual for a new world wine. You definitely get some spices in there. So, I mean, obviously it says there's some new oak in there. So there's a touch of that, but it's not overwhelming at all. Let's check it out. You know, it's got, it's got that red fruit. Um, it's got a little bit of dark fruit. Um, they mentioned it's 14 and a half alcohol. It's definitely, you can feel it. But it's not like overwhelming either. I mean, this is actually a fairly balanced wine for $14.99. 15 bucks if I haven't already said how much it was or suggested a retail price. I mean, there's like a, it doesn't say anything on here, but it feels like there's a touch of sweetness to it. Um, there might be a tad, even at fourteen five, there might be a, a touch of residual sugar. I mean, these things, these things could have been like super ripe grapes. Um, it's definitely a spicy character to the wine, which is what we typically expect from Zinfandel, at least California Zin. Um, it's a juiciness, like my mouth is watering. Um, there's there's uh, some creaminess to it. There's raspberry and strawberry, um, even like black cherry. Yeah, like black cherry on this. Um, definitely hot, 14 and a half, probably a little bit higher in reality. But you know, you, you definitely feel the alcohol. It tastes good. Um, it's definitely, um, uh, I don't wanna call it guilty pleasure wine, but it's a wine that you're gonna be like, you're at a party, you're at someone's house, you brought it for a dinner party or whatever. Um, and you're just gonna be like, man, you just, it, it's, it's a, it's gonna make people feel good. It's gonna taste good enough that people are like, oh, this is awesome wine. And for 15 bucks, I mean, it, it drinks exactly how it should. Um, it's good. I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, giving a little chill on this uh, to help kind of reduce that alcohol burn and, uh, and enjoy it. Now, what else about the wine? It honestly smells and tastes like so many other California wines. Um, and I have no, I, I have struggled with how to describe this, but there is this characteristic of California red wine. Um, and I've experienced it with from other, from other parts of the world, other new world parts, like, like say South America. And I think what I struggle with is there's a, I use called woodsy or bramble or, or country or it, it, it's, there's something about it. it. It's like this, it's like you bit into like this, this tree trunk. Um, and it's, it's very prominent. It's also a bitterness, all this stuff. And I'll be honest, it's not my favorite flavor in a wine. 
Um, it's not a bad wine by any means. Uh, I mean, I, I see a lot of people liking this wine. Uh, and, and it's I think it's a well-made wine, but it's got that one thing that I just, I usually just kind of go, oh. And it's usually in wines under $20 that I get it from. So I don't know if it's part of the winemaking process of, of wines that are in the, more in the value end of things, or it's just, I don't know, just something about California Reds. It's not bad. They have to also talk about sweet oak notes of molasses. I think I can get that. Uh, vanilla, yeah, maybe clove for sure. Uh, they talk about blueberry. I can maybe see a little blueberry and plum. I can see that. They even said dark cherry. I did not I'd say dark. I mean, I, I kind of read this like really briefly just to see what it was. And so I don't like to really read these things ahead of time because I don't want to have um, the tasting notes already suggested in my head. But I mean, it's 15 bucks. I think it's, I, I, will, I will enjoy this wine. Okay, there's a lot of other things going on in this wine that it kind of um, makes up for that one characteristic that I find in a lot of red wines. Um, but uh, I, think, I think it's a well-made wine. For 15 bucks, if you like uh, a Zin that's, honestly, to me, it's not super fruit forward. And that's kind of cool to me because, well, I prefer, I like all wine, but you got, if you uh, have to nail me down on something, well, then I'm going to want old world and this is not exactly an old world drinking wine but it's got some characteristics of that all right so uh on to wine number two as i already have coravined it um let's just boom put it right there boom all right so we have the 2014 tie-dye uh from the north coast uh red wine blend now this wine is kind of interesting because it's got a crap ton of shit going <laughs> it's got a bunch of stuff going on whoops all right, um, so we've got five. I think there was actually more than five grapes going on in this. One. I kind of looked it up, but this list says five. Actually, I think no. Uh, one of the other Parducci's has like six or seven grapes going on. It's like, dang. All right, anyway, um, yeah, this has got five grapes going on. Uh, this is not a Bordeaux blend, but it does have some Bordeaux grapes in it uh, and some other grapes. So it's got 62% Syrah, 12% Petite Syrah, 10% um, Cabernet Sauvignon, 10% Merlot, 6% Grenache. Like all kinds of just good stuff that I'm waiting to see how they put it all together. Um, they say it's a wine with ultimate harmony. Uh, so they say they carefully selected uh, unique varietals that bring uh, distinct aroma and flavor characteristics. Syrahs, Syrah provides the structure. Uh, for Syrah, structure provides the backbone. Petite Syrah adds density, rich color, and texture. The Cab, Merlot, and Grenache add deep, dark fruit and black fruit aromas and flavors, complementing the blend and silky mouthfeel, yada, yada, yada. Um, they say the grapes were hand-picked during the night at absolute ripeness. Uh, then they were... They say tenderly distemmed whole berries were immediately inoculated with yeast for, for pure fermentation. Okay, not sure what that means. Sounds like somebody in a marketing department. Um, gentle yet maximum extraction of great color flavors uh, and mouthfeel were accomplished by three, da three times daily pump overs. So it looks like they, on these sets of wines, they like the, the triple pump over. Um, and then some lots went some lots further went through extended maceration maceration to balance tannin structure uh it was aged uh after fermentation the wine was aged in barrel for 24 months it does not say anything about the uh whether it's brand new or old or american french but uh 24 months in barrel just period is a lot um 2014, say they bottled it in two, January 2017. I don't remember seeing a bottle. Some of these, some of these uh, fact sheets gave me a bottle. Uh, you know, the, when it was bottled, some of them didn't. I'm really interested in trying this. I don't know if it says anything back here on the back. Tie dye takes inspiration from the 1960s, a radical area of beatniks and hippies, peace signs and love beads, a time when flower power was in the air and old traditions gave way to creative, to a creative and colorful new way of life. Our North Coast Red Blend makes a bold statement in discerning selection of the, uh, okay. Anyway, let's see if the tie-dye actually had any 
other meaning. I mean, just they're just trying to, I guess, evoke a, uh, a feeling. I'm excited to try this. I mean, definitely more of a ruby color. Like this was like purpley, which I didn't really talk about. This is more of a like a like a bright ruby, like an actually gemstone ruby color. It's like super red. All right. Dark fruits for sure. I mean, they talk about, you know, they talk about dark red and black fruit. I get that. Absolutely. Some cocoa. Some tobacco. Some cedar box. Potting, fresh potted, potting soil. Whereas this one had the forest floor. This one's more like, you know, fresh soil. A uh, bit of caramel. I really like the nose on this. Uh, oh, I did, I did not mention the price. I think it's also $14.99 suggested. Yes, $14.99 suggested retail. Um, however, it's really not super aromatic. So it's like I'm struggling to get a whole lot out of it. I mean... It's tasty. I, I I like this one better than this one. I think it's just because the the fruit flavors are there a little bit. Um, the fruit's really kind of bright and ripe. Um, it's definitely more fruit on the palate than than non fruit. Um, definitely feel the alcohol. Fourteen five. So you know, honestly, you really want some food with this um, dinner party or just dinner or whatever. Um, I like the combination of flavors. Um, I, I think it's just interesting how you've got all this stuff. Um, what I do lack. Um, what I normally expect from a Syrah is I don't get a whole lot of meatiness out of it, um, which is fine. Um, it's definitely a fruit-driven wine. Um, really, that, that cherry, black cherry, dark, you know, um, a lot of cherry. Raspberry, too. Black raspberry, blackberry, uh, maybe even a little bit of blueberry. It's got a touch of that bramble, that, that woodsy characteristic. Um, like I'm actually eating the cedar box. Um, a little bit of potpourri in there, a little bit of cinnamon, red hot um, uh, spices. I like it. I mean, it's a $15 bottle of wine. It tastes good I, I, if, you're, if you like this style of wine, um, especially if it's like a mishmash of grapes, um, which I, I, I kind of dig that type of stuff. It's like kind of a field blend, so to speak. Um, you know, I think it's, I think it's kind of cool. I like it. I wouldn't turn it down. You know what I mean? If I was at someone's house and this is the red wine they were serving, I would drink, I would drink a couple glasses. That's it. All right. So uh, click the links above to frame me up. Click the links below to find out more information about the wines. Um, you can hit the, uh, the little donate button over there to uh, help me with uh, defray the cost of Burgundy uh, that I'm going to be hitting soon. Um, see, this might be the birthday week too, so that'd be a perfect time to send a donation. Um, it's either this episode or next episode is the birthday week. I, I'm not, I, think it's, I think it's this episode. I don't know. However the timing goes and however I release the episodes. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for now. Uh, thank you for stopping by. And we'll see everyone again next time. Which I did not sign off last episode with that, did I? I'm sorry. Later. Later.